Hello everyone, hi and welcome you all on Physics Adhan. So in the previous two videos on the revision of thermodynamics, we have studied about uh, kinetic theory of gases and first law of thermodynamics and then in this particular video, we are going to study Carnot engines and we will start second law of thermodynamics which is not going to finish in this video. So I will make an another video for, for the remaining part of second law of thermodynamics and if you have not seen video, click on the i button which is appearing here and uh, let's start the discussion on this topic of thermodynamics okay so let's start by having a discussion on something that is called the heat engines so what are the heat engines it has so it is a basically a kind of engine which has a temp which has two kinds of temperature one is very hot which is called the source and another reservoir which we called as sink which is a different temperature T2 this is lower temperature than this T1 and this is called as sink now it is a machine which extracts some amount of energy let's say Q1 amount of heat is extracted from this uh, reservoir some amount of work is done and the remaining amount of energy is released to the sink so from energy conservation one can write a very simple equation Q1 is equal to q1 is equal to w plus q2 okay so that's the equation by energy conservation energy conservation okay now if i ask a question uh, defining the parameters of this heat engine what is eta which is called the efficiency the efficiency is very simple how we define that what we have paid to the system and what the system has given to us. So efficiency is defined as what we get in a very simple layman language. So what we get and what we paid, what we pay to the system. Okay. So efficiency of the system eta, what we get is the work done W and what we have paid is Q1 amount of heat. So write W in terms of Q1 minus Q2. So this is Q2 by Q1. So this is the efficiency of this heat engine. 1 minus Q2 by Q1. Now there are some other kinds of engine exist. Not in reality. In practical, in theory. Which are called the Carnot engines. And they are supposed to have the maximum efficiency. And this can be proved that Carnot engines have the maximum efficiency than any other practical heat engines and this i will do in uh, when we will will be uh, when we will be studying this thermodynamics course in much more detail so right now i'm not going into that detail i'm just revising you the formula so carnot engine the efficiency is 1 minus t2 by t2 by t1 t2 by t1 means it depends upon the temperature okay so for carnot engine there is an expression which you can write here for this T2 by T1 is proportional to Q1 by Q2. So it means that the amount of heat extracted Q1 and Q2 is independent, so is not dependent, sorry, the amount of energy, this Q1 and Q2, the ratio depends upon the what's the temperature of T1 and T2. Okay, so they are not independent. You cannot extract as many amount of heat you want. So there are some limitations. Okay. Uh, one more thing in this, suppose if you want to increase the efficiency of uh, this Carnot engine. So how to increase the efficiency of Carnot engine? Either you decrease this temperature of the sink or you increase the temperature of this source. So this is the temperature of the sink and this is the temperature of the source. So either you can decrease this or increase this. So in practical, this is the more efficient way to decrease the temperature of the sink. So it increases the efficiency it increases the efficiency of the Carnot engine much more faster way than the source than when if you increase the temperature of the source. So decreasing the temperature of the sinks is the most efficient way to increase the efficiency of the Carnot engine. Now let's see some combinations of this Carnot engines combinations. So there can be two kinds of pos uh, possible combinations. One is series combination and one is parallel combination. So let me draw this uh, figure and uh, conclude it very fast. 
Okay, uh, so these two types of combinations can exist. One is the series combination, and other is called the parallel combination. So let me write the quantities first. Uh, okay, so let's say uh, this is a temperature T1. It extract amount of energy uh, heat Q1. Work done is W. Q2. This temperature is T2. The same amount of heat Q2 is extracted. Work done W and this is Q3 and this is T3. And let me first write the temperature T1, T2, T3, T4. And sorry, this arrow is reverted here. So please correct this arrow. So this is down. Okay, let me correct it. Okay, so this is W1, this is W2, this is Q1, this is Q2, this is Q3, this is Q4. So now we are set. And this whole is work done is W1 plus W2. So if I want to write the efficiency of this one, so efficiency is what you get is W1 plus W2 and what you paid was the Q1 amount of heat. So here we can write this equation that Q1 is W1 plus Q2. And from this expression, we can write Q2 is W2 plus Q3. By using these two equations, we can find that eta is 1 minus and the expression will come out to be uh, Q3 by Q1. So this is for heat engine. For Carnot engine, so this will be 1 minus T3 by T1. So this is the efficiency of heat engine and Carnot engine in series combination. Now, there can be a parallel combination where two uh, such types of heat engines are connected in a parallel. Then the efficiency is simply, the formula remains the same. What we get is W1 plus W2 and what we have paid to the system is Q1 plus Q3 amount of heat. And these expressions, uh, no, they will change. So Q1 is W1 plus Q2 and Q3 is W2 plus Q4. And when you substitute this equation, this will be 1 minus Q2 plus Q3 by Q, uh, W1 plus W2. Sorry, it will be Q4, I guess. Yeah, so Q1 plus Q3. So this will be the efficiency for the parallel combination of these heat engines. So this was just a very uh, quick revision how to find the efficiency of this type of engines. Now we can have not heat engines but a different kind of process which we generally uh, is known as refrigeration or the engines that are used to do such kind of things are called the refrigerators. Now what does a refrigerator do? I have uh, intentionally erased the arrows. So what it will do, the, uh, the temperatures are same. This we call as a source. This is called as a sink, which is at lower temperature. Now, instead of taking the energy from the source, we are doing some external work that is W. So since we are putting the external work, it will extract some heat from the sink. Let's me call this heat as Q2. And give this heat to the source which is at temperature q1 so from the energy conservation what will be the equation this uh, the energy conservation you can write it as w which is equal to sorry w plus q2 is equal to your q1 so this is the energy uh, equation for energy conservation there is a parameter let me call it as E effective. I will define what E effective or efficiency is that what you get. What you get is the extracted heat Q2 from the system and what you have paid the work done W. So you can write it as Q2 by this is uh, W is Q1 minus Q2. So this is Q1 minus Q2. We don't call this as an efficiency rather than we call this as an another parameter which we often write it as K and which is called the coefficient of performance which is called the coefficient of performance and recently in my notebook i have seen that there uh, there are some other cool features like uh, how these you have seen this blue boxes and so i i am using this for the first time and seeing how this experience is okay so the coefficient of performance and it's looks cool like i can know where the orientation of the line is so 
this k is q2 by q1 minus q2 for the heat engines this can be similar to t2 by t1 minus t2 the refrigerators made by the carnot engine so that is the coefficient of uh, coefficient of performance now note one thing that these eta which i have defined here this and this this has a value that is less than 1 because uh, efficiency cannot achieve 100% so it has to be less than 1 this k coefficient of performance can be in between 0 to infinity so that's the basic range of this uh, coefficient of performance okay and uh, there is a relation between this parameter eta and k so let me just write the relation between eta and k so the relation is eta k plus 1 is equal to 1 Okay. And you can uh, very and you can verify this equation by just putting the expressions t2 by t2 minus t1 and eta by 1 minus q2 by q2. So you will get the same equation as well. Okay, so this is a true equation. Now let me write two important uh, statements about this Carnot theorem, and then we will start the second topic that is the entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. So this is the statement for Carnot theorem. So the very first statement is that eta c is always greater than eta. This eta is the efficiency of heat engine. This eta c is the efficiency of the Carnot engine. The first statement is no engines can be more efficient than the Carnot engine working between the same temperature of uh, same limit of temperature. So whatever that. So if I fix the temperature, the source at T1 and T2, and there are two different kind of. Uh, uh, engines one is the heat engine and one is the Carnot engine so Carnot engine have the same sorry Carnot engine have the maximum efficiency or we can write this uh, statement so uh, I have just written it down just read it and understand what it says and the second statement is this which states that all reversible heat engines working between the same limit of temperature have same value efficiency whatever be the working substance so it does not depend upon the working substance of that heat engine so that was about the Carnot theorem and I have just stated two of uh, statements there is one definition and uh, the, these questions has been asked in DU exam and BHU exam so I thought this is uh, well here to define so that is called the thermal efficiency what is called the thermal efficiency is fraction of heat that converted to work so if i give some amount of heat so out of that heat how, what is the fraction that has been converted to work so let me call that eta fraction as f so this is w by q of whatever heat we have provided okay so sometimes they have they will give you okay so this is the amount of heat we have done and what uh, this much amount of work we have produced or you can calculate by energy conservation finding the uh, value of the work and they ask that what is the thermal efficiency so you just if you know the definition then you will be able to solve but these are this I have questions see I have seen this type of question in BHU and DU entrance examination okay so you can expect this in not in jam but in DU and BHU entrance examination Okay, now here the story ends for Carnot engine for revision. Now let us study the second law of thermodynamics or the entropy. So we have seen the idea. Okay, let's start from the uh, Carnot engine. What we have seen that Q1 by Q2 was equal to T1 by T2. If I write the expression in following way that Q1 by T1 is equal to Q2 by t2 and if i have sorry q2 by t2 t2 and the same way if i uh, follow this expression so this will be a constant quantity because q1 by q2 is a ratio of the amount of heat extracted from that temperature this is equal to another uh, reservoir which extracts some at, which is a different temperature t2 which uh, extracts some different amount of heat so this has to be a constant and in this way we can define an quantity which we called as 
ds that is called dq by t where ds is the change sorry ds is the change in entropy and this is how the entropy is defined that dq by t and in more mathematical and in more physical way it is not very appropriate for uh, this type of for when we are doing a revision so you just revise the concept that ds is dq dq by that particular temperature so this is what amount of heat is extracted or given to the system at a constant temperature t that is the rate change in entropy to that particular system now we are going to by using this formula i am going to have a find the change in entropy in different processes which we have studied in previous video so i am just writing ds is dq by t over here now the very first process which we have let's call as a reversible adiabatic process adiabatic process so since it's a adiabatic uh, adiabatic process and it is reversible so it can go from a to b adiabatically and come from b to a back so in this process that dq is zero it means that the change in entropy to the system is zero so it means it is this process is an isoentropic process iso entropic process so this is the first one let me uh, okay tell you this reversible isothermal process since we have done adiabatic so this is reversible isothermal process so what happens to this isothermal process there is no change in temperature so delta t is zero so this implies there is no change in internal energy so delta u will be zero so the change in entropy delta s is equal to uh i can write it as integral of dq by t or if you have get confused how i changed from d d to this delta so you can write it like this this is integration of ds so it will be between two points so this is entropy of 2 minus entropy of 1 i am writing this as delta s okay so this delta s is dq by dt so how it is defined since this is at constant temperature so this temperature is constant you can calculate this dq to be the delta s for this isothermal uh, reversible process now since this is an isothermal process delta u is zero so dq will be your work done dw so its integral will be work done so delta s is work done in isothermal process divided by at that temperature so what is work done n r so i have forgot what i have let me see so this was n r t and a uh, log of volume final by volume initial divided by temperature so delta s will be n r log of v f by v i or we can also write it as n r log of p initial by p final so this is the change delta s for the system okay so this was the work done in reversible isothermal process now there can be an isobaric process which we talked about earlier so let me talk about reversible isobaric process isobaric process so what the isobaric process is where your pressure is constant so i have defined a quantity dq which was n cpdt n cpdt so okay so that's the quantity which we have defined earlier so that the heat uh, dq is n cpdt at constant pressure because the cp is dq by dt so from here you can find this quantity delta s as dq by dt and its integral so this will be n if okay here the mistakes happen if cp is constant not a temperature of t then you can extract it outside it is better to write it as cp by t dt so this is the entropy change in isobaric process now let me write an another process that was isochronic process reversible isochronic process what was isochronic process where the volume is constant 
so for volume constant we know that dq can be written as n cv dt and this dq is uh, your du okay simply so or by using the definition of cv is the rate of change of a uh, heat with respect to temperature so this is dq by dt so in this process delta s is n integral cv by n integral cv by t dt so this is a uh, and change in entropy in isochronic process so you don't have to remember all these formulas this is just how you can calculate if you know the expressions for dq then you can simply calculate this expressions for uh, and change in entropy now uh, there are some other standard results which i will tell you here and what happens to change in entropy for a uh, reversible process so let's first discuss this the change in entropy in a uh, reversible process and irreversible process so first let me define the change in entropy for a reversible process so what process are called reversible so from where we have started from the same path uh, we get back to that uh, uh, configurations again okay so this reversible process let me call this as entropy as uh, okay let me just tell you directly because then i have to go in more detail so this will be for reversible process the change in entropy is zero and this is because for carnot engine i will give you just an intuitive idea because for carnot engine you have this quantity q1 by q2 q1 by t1 is q2 by t2 so if you go from one configuration which has a, a temperature t1 and with extract a heat q1 so there the entropy is let's say a the entropy is s1 and again a different uh, temperature t2 you have extracted a amount of heat q2 so its ratio q2 by q1 is same so let's call at that particular point the entropy is s2 so by in carnot engine that is a reversible engine and it has a property that q1 by q t1 is equal to q2 by t2 so s1 and s2 are equal so if you take uh, what is the difference between the or the change in entropy then that will be always be zero so for reversible process with change in entropy ha huh, including the surrounding and the system so if you include all the surroundings or you can simply say the universe the entropy of the universe or let me state in this way the change in entropy of the universe in a reversible process is always zero so this is the first case now there is a question which has been asked in many exams i have seen uh, tfr in jest and i think in jam also i am not very sure but they have asked in jam so the question is i am not writing the question just stating the question that there uh, there are two uh, Uh, there is a reversible engine which has a constant specific heat so what the properties are it is a reversible engine and it has constant specific heat constant specific heat and which are uh, working between two blocks of temperature this is t1 and t2 and it is a reversible engine uh, remember this is a reversible engine so what will be the final temperature of this engine so we know this is a reversible engine so the change in entropy is zero so if we put the change in entropy to be the zero then the final temperature will be under root of t1 t2 and i am sure you have seen this problem somewhere when you when you were be solving this thermodynamics problems so this is a very standard uh, problem this has been asked in jest exam this has been asked in uh, i am not sure about the jam but asked in tfr exam it's my uh, intuition or inner feeling that this has been asked in jam but i'm not sure okay you have to verify it so reversible engine which has a constant specific heat working between two blocks of temperature t1 and t2 has uh, will went through a final temperature that will be the under root of t1 t2 okay now uh, do one more thing and stop this video then we will be uh, the next topics we will deal in the next video so here in the second topic we have just studied uh, just revise the concept of reversible process change in entropy now the irreversible process so what happens to the change in entropy for irreversible we have seen in that this efficiency of carnot engine is always greater than the efficiency of any heat engine 
the efficiency of this is given by 1 by t2 by t1 is greater than 1 minus q2 by q1 okay so from here we can write it as q2 by q1 is greater than t2 by t1 or we can write it as q2 by t2 minus q1 by t1 is greater than 0 so this is nothing but change in entropy for an irreversible process that is 0 because this uh, okay i'm not uh, how to tell you because i have not told you these things so i don't expect you that um, okay let's talk about this this is a condition for uh, you know that the efficiency of the carnot engine is greater than any heat engine so this simply follows which shows that for irreversible process the the entropy always increases or you can also uh, express this delta s total for irreversible process is greater than zero so this is a very well profound result and the area of this thermodynamics and statistical physics is itself it's a whole plethora of physics and if you uh, study this very rigorously intuitively conceptually so you, then you will be very then you will be able to understand the meaning of this second law first law and zeroth law of thermodynamics and all that so right now i'm not very concerned about the physical intuition and the detail of this problem so at this level i am just giving you a brief short video so that you can have a very quick revision for upcoming exam of jam and just which is uh, not more than 20 days left for jam for jam it's 10 days just it is 20 days so in the next video what we will be dealing is change in entropy when two bodies are in contact so what in contact means they the contact be, can be between reservoir to reservoir or reservoir to any body or between body to body and then after we will study uh, these thermodynamic potentials and phase transition and all that hopefully in the next three video i will be able to cover uh, this short videos for revision and then if time permits i will uh, i will have a discussion on uh, this micro canonical and canonical sense and symbols or simply the statistical physics thank you and if you like this video give a thumb up comment below the comment below and let me know if, if there is was any error i don't think there may be error because i was very fast so do let me know and thank you very much for watching this video